Uh, jobless claims earlier this morning did come in under consensus, 881,000 versus an expected 950,000. That's a new low since the start of the pandemic. The acting chair of the President's Council of Economic Advisors, Tyler Goodspeed, is with us this morning. Tyler, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, definitely trending in the right direction, uh, although there's a lot of concerns about uh, the methodology with claims, the degree to which census might color the jobs number tomorrow. What's the expectation at the White House? Well, we were definitely very encouraged by the unemployment insurance claims numbers coming out today. In the continuing claims, we saw 764,000 fewer Americans in insured unemployment for the week ending August 22nd. Uh, that was a that was a tremendous number, um, and and we, we it certainly bodes well for the August employment situation report coming out uh, tomorrow. Is there you know we, we track a lot of high frequency data, uh, credit card spending, uh, a various color that we get from the likes of Visa, and in general the the view has been that August has not been as weak as some had feared, given the expiration of those enhanced unemployment benefits. Does, does the White House have an explanation as to why that might be true? Well, for one thing, as, as, as we just saw in the unemployment insurance claims numbers, the labor market has been stronger than expected. This was the fifth consecutive week of six-digit declines in continuing claims. And uh, right now, the expectations on the street are for private payroll employment growth of 1.3 million in the month of August. That's certainly going to support uh, consumer spending. And as you said, we saw in, in, in retail sales data from the credit cards, uh, that, that actually retail sales are now above their February 2020 levels. And then also a, a, an additional level of support for consumer spending was the continuation of enhanced unemployment assistance by the federal government thanks to executive action by President Trump. So the, the takeaway for some, uh, because of those uh, better than expected numbers, is that perhaps there's less urgency to put a compromise together for further aid on the Hill. Uh, what's the view on that? Well, the president absolutely wants bipartisan legislation that he can then sign into law. It was in the absence of that movement on the Hill that he proceeded with executive action. And I, I would just like to note that of all the people in this town who could have acted to, prov to provide con a continuation of enhanced unemployment insurance benefits, who could have acted to provide protection and relief for student borrowers and American renters, who could have acted to, to boost take-home pay for Americans who continue to go into work in the face of present challenges and risks. Of all the people who could have taken action on each of those fronts, only one person in this town actually did that. Tyler, finally, on trade, um, the trade deficit, as you know, in July... Uh, it's almost $64 billion. It's the highest level in 12 years. Uh, imports were up by a record. Um, the view among some is going to be that the trade war that the president once said was easy to win is just not paying off. Why, why is that? So when we look at, I, I, I see, a, a, I, we have a different interpretation of the trade numbers coming out today. First of all, first and foremost, it shows a recovery in global trade. Exports grew, imports grew by more. The U.S. is still a predominantly services-oriented economy, so we're going to and services have, have not been rebounding quite as quickly as goods. So we're we're going to expect uh, 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 the goods deficit to widen as as things recover. But look, when we look at the national and income product accounts uh, data, then what we actually see is that net exports as a share of GDP in the United States have improved uh, in 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Uh, relative to the preceding eight and 16 years. So as a share of GDP, net exports have actually improved to negative 2.8% during the three and a half years of the Trump administration. This compares to an average of three point, negative 3.1% during the preceding eight years and an average of almost negative 4% during the preceding 16 years. Uh, but I, as I said, I think the, our number one read in the, these trade numbers today is that this is a sign of a rebounding U.S. and indeed global economy.